Good morning. Why don't we give God a hand clap of praise? We'd like to share with you this morning that uh, beginning this week, masks are not mandatory, they are voluntary. Masks are not mandatory, they are voluntary. So if you want to wear your mask, if you got matching masks and clothes, you can wear your mask, amen. <laughs> and if you, if you don't want to, don't, don't be coughing in folk face, things of that nature, amen. Put your elbow over your mouth and the inner elbow, amen. Be kind. Hallelujah. God is good to us. We're going to ask Sister Kimberly if she'll come with our announcements. Reverend Housen is going to come and render for us this morning's prayer. Good morning. Welcome to St. John Fort Myers, where Dr. Leon Williams is our senior pastor and teacher. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge all visitors. If we have anyone visiting with us for the first time, would you please stand? Hey, man, we are all at home. St. John, let's give ourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Giving opportunities are available on our website at www.stjohnfirstnbc.org. We we'll also have giving opportunities later in our worship service. The Harvest Festival. Join us on October the 31st for the Community Harvest Festival in the Fellowship Hall parking lot. We're asking for donations of two liter sodas, candy, and cakes for the cake walk. Bins will be placed near the entrances of our church so that you can place these items in there. So you all know we haven't had our Harvest Festival in a couple years. But we're looking forward to it welcoming our community so that we can have a great time celebrating and a fun time. So we ask that you participate in that event and also make sure we get these cakes out here. Y'all know that cakewalk is exciting. <laughs> the St. John Food Pantry is open tomorrow. We're asking the volunteers to please be present at 830. We received some clothing items, brand new clothes and some other food items that we are going to distribute on tomorrow. So we need to make sure that we set up and organize those items. So please be here at 830 tomorrow to get that set up. Today we're giving away, um, we're having a barbecue dinner immediately following our worship service. So we're asking for volunteers. We need your assistance with helping um, distribute those dinners and make sure and serving. So we ask that you share with your family and friends. We plan to feed over 500 people today. And so we want to make sure that we do our best with making sure we facilitate that. Ministry leaders, a friendly reminder of our 2023 budgets are due in the office on Monday, October 31st. You should have received a flyer today about the Hattitude. The Women Intermediate Auxiliary is hosting a Hattitude program here at St. John on Saturday, October the 22nd. The donation is $10 per person. Please see any WIA person if you have questions regarding that endeavor. Christian sympathy to Clarence and Jeanette James for the loss of his brother-in-law of St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, let's continue to keep that family in prayer, and also let's continue to pray for the Watkins family uh, as they deal with their bereavement as well. We have a couple of things that are going on next week. We are soliciting volunteers for our grab-and-go lunches on Tuesday. So next week, Tuesday, we need volunteers to help prepare the lunch uh, pallets, plates that we have. And then on Wednesday, we're going to have a grab-and-go dinner. We also need volunteers for that as well. And then on Friday, we'll also have grab-and-go lunches. And St. John, I just want to pour my heart out to each of you. We have been uh, received countless volunteers here at our church that have been assisting us and make sure we're able to facilitate what we're doing. And just give ourselves a round of applause because we have been doing... <laughs> Mission work at its finest. We're St. John First Missionary Baptist Church, and we've been doing that since this hurricane. So I just thank you for all that you're doing. Let's continue doing what it is that God desires of us, and God will continue to bless us. God bless you. Thank you, and have a safe and wonderful week. Good morning heard a discrepancy uh, yesterday and I I think I just need to clear the air just a little bit uh, 
my pastor um, believes that LeBron James is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. I know it's Michael Jordan is the GOAT. That's what I know. Uh, there's a disagreement, and it's okay. That's okay. But I, and I, I, I discovered that yesterday. But listen, there's one other thing I discovered yesterday, and I love it, that not only is Pastor uh, incorrect with his assumption of the GOAT, I learned that our pastor is, watch this, he is the boat, the best of all teachers. He's the boat. So we have our own boat, the best of all teachers in our house, in our house. That's our, that's our, he's our, he's our, the boat, the boat. He's the boat right there. He's the boat. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And as we used to say back in the projects, you go, boy. Yes, listen, listen. All of us are blessed in some form or fashion. We were talking back in Sunday school this morning. How I'm sure all of us have seen or know someone that really has it bad. Lost everything house washed away or house demolished and you and you drive up into your driveway into your garage and everything is fine we know that prayer is the answer and it may not feel like that's enough it may not feel like that but here's what i want to encourage us what you've seen if you've if you've drove by this road you've seen prayer with legs out here in the parking lot, in the fellowship hall. We've, we not only pray for the people who were displaced or misplaced, but we begin to help them in ways to help them to know that love exists in this house. So not only do we have a boat in this house, that boat flows with love. Amen. 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 Okay. Let's talk to God about our problems. God, we thank you today. We thank you that you've blessed us to be in this house today. God, we have taken some things for granted. We've taken for granted that cool air blows on us as we sit in this blessed place. We've taken for granted that the music that Brother Jeff plays, we've taken for granted a lot of things that we want to say forgive us but God we've also sinned against you we've done some things God said some things our feet may have gone some places that should not have gone hands have touched some things they should not have touched please God forgive us and not only forgive us God but cleanse us from all unrighteousness as grandmama said God prop us up on every lean inside and we give you praise, God, for your forgiving spirit running up and down these aisles. But now, God, that we, we, we believe in our heart that we're forgiven and standing upright and ready to give you praise, ready to offer worship to you. God, loose our, the chains on our hands that we may clap today. Loose the chains on our vocal cords that we'll shout amen. We'll shout hallelujah. We'll shout preach, preacher. We'll shout with the tops of our voices because we know that you've blessed us so. We thank you, God, for the anointing that flows from the robe of Jesus down to the hands of our pastor, down to his voice, God, to allow us to learn your word. We thank you, God, because you've helped us to understand that when we study to show ourselves approved as servants needing not to be ashamed, you bless us. And we thank you in advance for the blessing, oh God. We thank you for blessing us, holding us, keeping us, protecting us, shielding us. Your word is declared, Psalms 5, that you bless the righteous with favor as with a shield. And we thank you for favor today, oh God. We thank you for grace today, oh God. 
We thank you that you look beyond our faults, God, and saw our needs. We thank you, God, that your blood, the blood has never lost its power. We thank you, God, that it reaches to the highest and flows to the lowest valley. Thank you for the blood, God. We thank you, God, for helping us to understand we too, we too can know you. So ask now, God, a blessing upon our pastor. God, strengthen his hands. Strengthen his mind. Strengthen his heart, God. And we ask you, bless him, God, for all of the ideas or resources that have been implanted or infused in his mind to help our community. And God, any energy or time or finances that he has exhausted in this effort, fill him up, God. Fill him up till he overflows, God. Fill him up, God. Fill him up from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Fill him up, oh God. And for every volunteer this week, oh God, they have extended time, grace, love, passion, energy. Fill them, God, and present them, God, faultless before your throne with exceeding joy. And we thank you now. We thank you, God, for our musicians. Thank you for our choirs, God. Thank you for every person under the sound of my weak voice as ready to worship, ready to praise, ready to just shout. We ask now, God, to move distractions out of our way that we will shout to you, we will sing to you, we will talk to you, we will glorify you, God, to the highest. We thank you for our security staff, our multimedia staff, our ushers, our culinary staff. God, bless the man sweating on that grill since 6 o'clock this morning. Bless God, bless God, bless God, bless God. And we give you the praise already for what we're going to see today. These things we ask in the most awesome and wonderful name of Jesus. But God, we ask a special blessing for all of those displaced this week. We thank you, God, for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give yourself a round and round and around and around and around and around. clap your hands. Come on, can we have a little church this morning? And thank God for bringing us over. Come on, put your hands together. Right. 
world Tell them about this I can tell the nation Tell them I've been blessed Tell them that the comforter He already come Tell them that the victory It's already been won I'm gonna run He's been good to me Been good to me been good to me anybody got it right come on and clap your hands anybody got it right anybody got it right anybody got it right he could have been dead and gone could have been dead and gone could have been dead and gone you let us live on and on i've got it right oh that God would make everything all right.
Good morning again. Uh, we are grateful to the Lord today for uh, blessing us to be able to assemble together. You know, it could have easily been our building was ripped apart and we wouldn't have a place where we can assemble uh, and corporately worship. That could have happened, uh, but God has been good to us. And so we are grateful. We are grateful for that. You know, we tend to thank God when we miss what God does. I think we should thank God when he preserves and keep the things that we have. We should give him praise and tell him thank you for that. I've been in Florida all my life and many others have been here and we all talk about the worst storm that we can remember. Some Charlie, but those who are older remember a storm by the name of Donna. 1960, and it ravished South, Southwest Florida. 
Uh, but I tell you what, Eon said, ain't going to let Donna outdo me. I mean, this storm was a real storm. It terrified some people. Um, uh, one of the things that we're doing, in, at least I'm trying to do, in cooperation with some of the other pastors, in addition to feeding people, is helping people mentally and emotionally with counseling. Uh, because a lot of people have lost so much, not, not just their possessions, but loved ones. And so we want to avail ourselves to be there for people who need prayer or who need someone to listen to them or who need to share out of their emotions the things that are going on in their lives. And so let's be mindful of that as well. Uh, as we feed people and as we provide for them material possessions, let's be mindful of their mental and emotional state. And it's easy to for us who were spared to maybe overlook that part, but there are lots of people this morning who are homeless. And I mean, they had nice homes, jobless, and they had good jobs. So uh, people are in need uh, greatly uh, today. A couple of other things I would like to say as we move forward this morning. Um, on yesterday, we had a couple of uh, semi-truck loads of water and food. And uh, I don't know if Commissioner Keon McGee is listening, but I want to say to him, thank you. Yes, Commissioner Keon McGee is from Dade County. I was connected to him by Alfonso Jackson. Y'all remember Pastor Jackson? He preached revivals for us. He called Commissioner McGee and say, I know one pastor in Southwest Florida, and that was me. And that's how we got those tractor and trailer loads of food and water on yesterday. I want to say to you, Pastor Jackson, thank you, Commissioner McGee. Thank you so much for uh, coming to Southwest Florida and blessing us the way you all did. Uh, you know that masks are no longer mandatory. They are voluntary. So for those of you who need to wear a mask, you can. Let us be careful uh, because many of our people have become really ill from um, COVID. And so we want to be careful with that as well. Um, volunteers next Wednesday, our state convention is sending us truckloads of stuff next week, Wednesday. This week, I'm sorry, Wednesday. So we're going to need volunteers to help distribute these goods to our community as well. That's Wednesday coming. They should be coming in here to help us. I want to say thank you to our missions ministry who has donated funds during this time uh, so that we are able to bless people with all that food we are giving. We, th those hot plates, that's St. John. That's not anyone else. Those hot plates are St. John First Missionary Baptist Church, and our missions ministry has helped provide for us to be able to do that every, almost every day any, uh, anyway. The hype ministry is alive and well today for those of you who would like to participate, young people in our hype ministry. Uh, we will have one of the ushers to give you direction to, to where they are. They are in our education building and they are fellowshipping right now as I speak. I want to take a few minutes for those of us who haven't met some of others of us to just stand up and greet someone, not your husband, wife, cousin that you know. Greet someone you don't know. Amen. And I'm going to give us a few minutes for meet and greet. Meet and greet. Meet and greet. Meet and greet.
How about that? How about that? Amen. Let us pray. God, we love you and we thank you. We understand, Lord, that uh, without you we can do nothing. But of course, with you all things are possible. So God, we pause this morning to say thank you for all that you have done for us, all that you are doing for us, and all that you will do. God, we know you're faithful and you're eternal, so there's no end to what you will do. God, bless us in our time together in your word. God, give us a word that would be a blessing to our people. And then, Father, please let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. For those of you that have Bibles, if you will open them with me to the book of Romans, chapter number 8. Book of Romans, chapter number 8. I would also like to add that I uh, just want to give a shout out to all the churches in the community that have really uh, stepped up and served this community. I mean, all the churches, I won't call names, but pastors have been working, cooperation with each other, giving direction for resources that they may not have at their church, but they'll say, hey, Pastor Williams has it down at St. John, or uh, Pastor Ford at Cornerstone, or Pastor Givens at Mount Olive, and uh, I just call those few names because these are churches that are working to be a blessing to our community. So I thank God for churches being churches. Uh, when we really need to be churches. Amen. The book of Romans chapter number 8, commencing with verse number 31. I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. The Bible reads, What then shall we say in response to the, these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I started preaching a series uh, from the theme relying on God's resources, relying on God's resources. Today I want to talk to you from the topic, God is for us. God is for us. God is the most valuable resource you have. God is the most valuable resource you and I have. Many people and many of us felt helpless as Ian raged across Southwest Florida. We were totally helpless. It, didn't, it did not matter where you were or who you are, no matter where you could or uh, lived, we were helpless. We were helpless against all that water. We were helpless against all that wind. We were helpless against the rage of that storm. No one could run out to the beach and say, come on in, I'll take you on. 
we were helpless. This is why God is our greatest resource. I mean, we're grateful for all the resources that we get and that we have been given and provided to give to people. But the source of the resource is God. God is the source of all that we have. In the book of Romans, the last four verses of Romans 8, the last four verses form the pinnacle of this book. Like a mountaintop towering above the hills, this section lift our hearts to new heights in understanding the grace of God. The grace of God. That's the resource I'm going to talk about today. Is the resource that's called the grace of God. Paul poses five rhetorical questions which focus on all that God has promised to do for us in Jesus Christ. Notice Paul starts by saying, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? One of the resources that I have relied upon and experienced as a result of the grace of God is God's power. God's power. Listen, I can count on God's power. Matter of fact, when Jesus was um, endeavoring to leave the earth, on the day, on the, uh, at the time he was about to leave, he said to the disciples, he says, wait here until you are endued with power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Samaria and Judea, well, and, Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. These guys were men who were powerless. They were broke. They had no money. God gave them a charge that was bigger than they themselves could handle. <laughs> they said, how are we going to get all over the world? We left our businesses to follow you. We don't even have a stable income. How can we do this? By God's power. God says, after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be empowered. And God kept his promise, didn't he? Just a few days later, while they were in the upper room, the Bible says, and when they all were on one accord, God endued them with power. Power beyond their natural abilities. You know, I watched this week. As, as we were trying our best to help people. But, but something on the inside said, God's going to feed every soul. God's going to take care of everybody who's in need. That's power. That was beyond our power. That was beyond our ability. That was beyond these other churches' abilities and power. But God, when he gives us an assignment, it's generally beyond our natural ability. And this causes us to have to trust God, all the volunteers that came out this week. I'm so glad that school teachers couldn't go to work for Lee County, but they went to work for Jesus. Amen. All week long, they worked for the Lord, helping people. I'm so grateful for that. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 reads this way, you dear children are from God and overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Satan came to steal, kill, destroy. Satan came to just destroy and annihilate and, 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 and cause damage to people's homes and, and to people's lives. But the one who is inside of us, he could touch my house but not my soul. He could touch my car but not my soul. He could steal things from me, but not my joy. Because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. <laughs> and no storm can take it away. Do I have a witness in here? 
the thing we have to remember is when we are depending on God's power is that we do things through him and through his strength. We have to rely upon his strength. Paul says this to the church at Philippi when he's incarcerated uh, in jail. In Ro he's incarcerated in Rome, and uh, he writes back to them. They are one church to have provided for him, and in 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 reciprocating or at least uh, advising them that because you've been so good to me, because you've been so good to me, because you fed me when I was hungry. <laughs> because you sent me clothes when I was cold and in prison. He said, my God shall provide all your needs according to his riches in glory. That's what's happening here. St. John, listen, for years in the past, at least since I've been here, we've uh, helped churches in our association, in our state convention. I've mentioned to you, I've said, hey, can y'all make a donation so we can help this church or that church? But listen, when you bless the people of God, my God, shall provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. It was their day then, but it's our day now. Amen. And listen, God will give it back if you give it. God will provide for your needs if you stand up when God needs you to stand up and provide for, for people. Listen, I know all of us have needs, particularly in this area. And all of us are suffering in some way or in some fashion. <laughs> but listen, the best time to give is when you're suffering. I'm telling you, you to get your mind off you. It'll cause you to see the condition of others. And most of all, it'll cause you to see how good God is. When you're willing to work for God, when you have stuff all in your way, when you have problems all in your life, God will see about you. He'll strengthen you. That's why Paul says, I'm incarcerated, but I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. God knows how to do it. Grace means I can always count on God's power. I can always, I need his power, y'all. I need his power. We've been out here every day since last week. Every day, guys, guys were saying, man, we need a rotating schedule. I need somebody to substitute for me. <laughs> Amen. We need another shift of people to come in and do work. But listen, every time we say that, we go and pick up another stack of water. We pick up another stack of food, and God keeps right on strengthening us. St. John, God got us. God got us. Y'all know how old this building is? I don't, but I know it's old. It is an old building. Look, look, look at God. Look at God. Storms all around us. This building should have failed. This building should have crumbled. But God will provide. He's a great God. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever. When you walk outside today, you ought to look back and say, Lord, thank you. You know, that's how good God is to us. Secondly, secondly, listen, talking about God is for us and what the grace of God means, it means we can count on God's power. But secondly, it means we can count on God's provisions. Look at verse number 32. The Bible says, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, generously give us all things? God says, listen, the worst has already happened. That's when Jesus came. That's when Jesus gave his life. That's when Jesus hung on a cross. That's when Jesus died for us. He said the worst is over. Now, if I gave my son for you, how will I not feed you if you're hungry? How will I not clothe you if you're naked? Jesus said those are small things in comparison to what I did 2,000 years ago. When I gave my son to die for your soul, listen, there's no medicine for your sin sick soul but the medicine of the cross. There is no food that can feed and nourish and, and help your sin sick soul. The only thing that can reach your soul is the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. My soul would be lost. And if my soul is lost, there is no hope. Doesn't matter how much food I eat today. 
I will be a hopeless full Negro if my soul is lost. And the only person that can secure safety and hope for the soul of men is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, God says, if I gave him, how will I not give you a pair of shoes? If I gave him, why would I give you a pair of socks? If I gave him, don't you know I'd give you some underwear and a t-shirt? If I gave him, don't you know I'd give you what you need? The Bible says, delight thyself also in the Lord. And what will he do? He'll give you the desires of your heart. Oh, my God. My God is able to do more than we can even ask or even think. Listen, God's grace not only means we can count on God's power and we can rely on God's provisions, but God's grace also means I can count on his protection. How many know God protected them? How, I mean, if, if you in the building, God protected you. You would have been floating in the Gulf, Amen. You'd have been floating in Estero Bay, amen. You'd have been floating in the Calusa Hatchie, amen. <laughs> God protected us. This is what God will do when God is for you. Now let me let me let me go back and say this. It doesn't mean the folk who are who did float don't know God. It doesn't mean the people who were in the Gulf don't know God. Amen. It doesn't mean those people who died didn't go to heaven. Amen. I want to I want to make sure that is known because I could have been floating. But I would have been in heaven. Amen. I'd have floated right on in the bosom of the Lord. I may have died floating, but I'll be living with the Lord right now because my soul is saved. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Romans 8, 33, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. <laughs> hey, you can talk about me as much as you please, but the more you talk, I'm going to bend my knees. Why? Because God saved me. Amen. And that's the truth. Listen, when we bring a charge against a believer, we are acting like the devil. Because he's the accuser of the brethren. He goes to God saying, look at him. Look at her. Look at what they did. Look at how they talk. He's the accuser. <laughs> so, so, so listen, listen. There's nothing anyone can do to you because of God's protection. That's why the Bible says it is God who justifies. Who can bring anything against God? God is the judge. The book of Revelation gives these words by the apostle John. He says, then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of the brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. Satan has been defeated. God has triumphed over him. You remember when he triumphed over him? It was one Friday on a hill called Calvary. God gained victory. He took up a cross to win that battle. He shed his blood to win that battle. He laid in a grave to win that, that battle. And then early Sunday morning, he rose from the dead. God can protect anybody from anything. God conquered death, the grave, and hell. <laughs> he took the sting out of death. That's why we have homegoing celebration instead of funerals, because he took the sting out of death. That's what God does. God's grace, you can count on. God's protection means you can count on God's protection. It means you can count on God's provision. It means you can count on God's power. Hey, hey, listen, you need God's power as well as I do. I need God's power all the time. How many of us need his strength today? Today, today, I need his strength. I'm so glad he woke me up when early this morning. Started me on my way. Put food 
on my table. Good God Almighty, there are some people who are hungry, but we have eaten this morning. And right now, many of us are looking forward to the barbecue ribs and chickens and baked beans and all that God has to offer us. Listen, that came from God. That didn't come from anywhere else. Had not been for the Lord, wouldn't be no cow. Wouldn't be no pig. I like pork ribs. I, don't, I know they're not good for you, but I like pork ribs. If I'm going to die, I want to die eating what I want to eat. Amen, somebody. But, but listen, listen, I want to say this to you. That pig came from God. That cow came from God. That water for them sodas that we love to drink, even though they're eating up our kidneys, came from God. God's provision, God's protection, God's power. Watch this, watch this. A lot of us need this one. Uh, in Romans chapter 8, verse 34, the Bible says, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Listen, God's grace means we can count on God's pardon. That's forgiveness. Pardon, P-A-R-D-O-N. That means forgiveness. How many of us need to be forgiven today? Mm -hmm. How many of us going to need forgiveness this evening? Mm -hmm. I don't know what's in my way. You know how folk talk to you now. You know you're going to need forgiveness because they're going to say something to you and something going to rise, rise up on the inside and you're going to start rolling. Ladies, rolling your eyes and God's going to start gritting their teeth and all kinds of stuff going to go through your mind. We need the pardon of the Lord right now. So who, who can condemn anybody? Jesus is the one who died for us. Jesus is the one who set us free. Every first Sunday, we celebrate the pardoning of the Lord. Why? Because his blood represents the forgiveness of sin. And so we all celebrate that the Bible says, the Bible lets us know that God is the one who forgives, and he forgives freely. He forgives swiftly. Amen. He don't delay in forgiveness. He says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you. He don't say, well, I'm waiting to see if you are serious or not. I'm waiting to see, do you really mean it? God forgives when we confess. Not only does he forgive us, he cleanses us, the Bible says, from all unrighteousness. Amen. That's everything. That all means everything. All unrighteousness. I'm mad at some folk right now God has forgiven. I'm angry with some people God has forgiven and is set free. I know I'm not the only one. You're walking around mad at folk today too, but God has forgiven them if they've confessed their sins. God says, I ain't taking no excedrin. I'm not taking any a leave. I'm not walking around with a headache while folk look at me, talk about me. I'm going to forgive folk. You know what the word forgiveness means? It means to release. It means to let go. That's what the word means. And I'm so glad God let me go from sin's penalty. The wages of sin is death. God freed me from that penalty and gave me eternal life. Anybody have eternal life in the house today? Lastly, I want to tell you this about God and his power and his grace and what he'll do and, and how God is resourceful for us. Uh, listen, God's grace means that I can always count on this, God's presence. God's presence. I can always count on it. The Bible says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution? Or famine, or naked. There's somebody's naked today. Somebody's hungry. That's famine today. Somebody's going through a hardship today, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors. How? Through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death 
nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ, from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Listen, I can count on his presence. God loves me. God loves me when I act ugly. God loves me when I act right. God loves me when I serve. God loves me when I refuse to serve. God's presence is always here. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, you got to remember this. God is love, but the way you get to his love is in Christ Jesus. You got to be in Christ Jesus to experience the love that I'm sharing with you about God. God loves the world. That's why he gave Christ Jesus. The Bible says when he let it rain, it rains on the unjust as well as the just. So everybody gets his water. When his sun shines in the morning, it shines on everybody. On the, on the, on the criminal in prison, they getting the sunshine. They getting the rain. Listen, God loves us all. But if you want to experience the deep kind of love, it's found in Christ Jesus. And when you are in Christ, you're in the love of God. Jesus says, God says when he saw Jesus being baptized by John the Baptist, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Bible says he'll give us eternal life. We'll be with him forever. Always be in the presence of God. In closing, in closing, in closing, you want to remember this. I don't have to worry about certain things. One is I don't have to worry about opposition from God. God is not opposing me. God is for you. God is for us. Why? Because he loves us us. <laughs> and, and don't let folk fool you. Sometimes you do things and you think, oh, God is against me. God is never against you. God is always for you. He just has his way for you demonstrating that he's for you. If you do wrong, if you go left, if you go the wrong way, repent. Come back and go the right way. He's waiting for you. He's always waiting for us. I don't ever have to worry about situations from God. God says, I'm, I'm going to provide. I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm Jehovah Jireh. Guess what Jehovah Jireh means? The Lord our provider. Hey, you guess how much resources he has? He said the cattle on a thousand hills are mine. Another writer said all the gold and all the silver belong to the Lord. You just got to go dig for it. <laughs> you just got to get up Monday morning and go find some work and you'll get some of that gold and some of that silver. Anybody got some gold and silver in their bank account? I got a few pieces. I got a few pieces of gold and silver, but I go to work. Amen. <laughs> I go to work and he provides for our needs. I don't have to worry about situations with God. God's going to provide for me. He took care of my spiritual needs when he saved me. That was the greatest need that I ever have. He takes care of my daily needs. He says when you pray, say Lord give us this day. Come on, come on, come on. Our daily bread. Amen. God says I want you to be able to do things. I want you to be enabled to go and bless and help people. So I'm going to give you the nourishing that you need so you can go out and do those kinds of things. Thirdly, I don't have to worry about any accusation from God. Listen, God's not accusing me of my sin. 
God already know I'm a sinner. Amen. Hey, so that's not a problem for God. That's a problem for me. I need to get that right. Amen. But it doesn't, it doesn't hamper, hinder, or hurt God. God says, I'm going to provide for your sinful ways. I'm going to send my son into the world. And he's going to give you eternal life. Remember, Jesus goes into the leper camp. Sin don't bother Jesus. And the Bible says he reached out his hand and he touched the leper. Y'all remember the days when AIDS first came out? We were afraid to be close to people with AIDS. You know, I don't want to get that stuff. Oh, what they, they, if somebody said you had it, they would stay away from you. It would be like you were in a, a, an AIDS camp. Amen, because nobody wanted to come around you. Ignorance does that. But listen, listen. Jesus goes into the leper camp, touches the leper, and heals him. Heals him. Jesus is not afraid of things we are afraid of. God is not accusing us of anything. God's loving us into a right relationship with him. He defends you and me. Now, Satan has gone to God today on probably some of us. He, he's probably right there right now. And Satan saying, you know, you know that guy, listen to him, listen to him, Jesus. He up there saying all that stuff. Watch what he get in his car. Watch what he get. Watch the music. Listen to the music he listening to when he get inside his car. Satan going back. He's accusing us right and left. Listen, he does it enough. Him and his demons, we don't need to do that to each other. We got enough spirits accusing us all over the place, all the time. God is not accusing us. God says, that's my son. No. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my daughter, although she might be cussing right. <laughs> she let somebody have it right now. But that's my daughter. That's my, da that's my little lying cussing daughter. I just got... <laughs> <laughs> you know how your mama would say it about you. Yeah, she, she messed up, but she mad. <laughs> he messed up, but he mad. He mad. But listen, God does not accuse us. Then, then lastly, listen to this. God does not condemn us. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. See, God is not in the business of putting us down, condemning us, closing us down, causing us not to be a person who can be saved or who can function as a child of God. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world, but I came that the world might be saved. Listen, he's praying for us moment by moment. He knows the struggle we go through. We go through. He knows the problem and the hindrances that are affecting us. He knows that. So the Bible says, what, what is he doing now? He's interceding for us. He's always praying, always asking God the Father, God, open a door for it. You know what he needs. God, make a way for her. You know what she needs. God, help her with that child. You know she's by herself with those children. Help her out. That's what Jesus is doing for us right now. Listen, when God is for you, no one can be against you. This is it. I don't ever have to worry about condemnation. I don't ever have to worry about separation. I don't ever have to worry about separation. There are people who believe they can be saved, but if they sin, I don't know which sins you have to commit. I don't know how many you have to commit, but they say you can be lost again. So I'm always trying to figure out, well, where's the boundary for loss? How many sins do I have to commit to be lost once I'm saved? Uh, you know, how much wrong do I have to do? Is If I just use one cuss word, I won't be. But if I use, you know, a sentence, then I may be lost then. Uh, so I, I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sometimes we think our ugliness is something that will cause God to lack. God is love. I don't care how kind I am or how mean I am. God still love. God is confident in who he is and in what he does. God still loves us even if we move away from our fellowship. 
God loves us if we come to church or if we don't come to church. Nothing can separate us from the love of God uh, in Christ Jesus. God want to hold your hand. He doesn't want you to just hold his hand. God want to take his great big hand and hold yours. And I don't care how much you wiggle and struggle and try to break away. His hand too big. It's too strong. He's going to hold on to you. He came too far. His death was too great. God's power to raise him from the dead is too valuable. He's going to hold on to you. When your friends let you go, that's okay. God's going to hold on to you. When the preacher lets you go, that's okay. God's going to hold on to you. When the deacon won't speak to you, that's okay. God's going to hold on to you. He'll never let you down. When God is for us, who can be against us? Let us bow. God, we love you. We thank you, Lord. We praise your holy name. God, we understand that we can count on your power. We understand, God, today that we can count on your provisions. We know, God, that we can count on your protection. We know, God, we can count on your pardon. Uh, God, and we thank you now that we can count on your presence. Someone in the building today, God needs to know that you're always with them. Someone so weak, they can't hardly get about. They need to know that you have power. Power for them physically. Power for them emotionally. Power for them mentally. And you have power for them financially. God, help them to see you have power. You're a resourceful God. You want to meet needs. You want to bless us. Now, there may be a person here today who's thinking, I want that God. I want that God. I want all those resources that he has to offer, his power, his protection, his provision, his pardon, his presence. I want it. I want it. I want it. You can come and get it. You can get out of your seat right now. You can come forward right up here where I am, and you can get the power of God. You can get the provision of God. You can get the protection of God. You can experience the pardon of God. And from this day forward, you can experience the presence of the almighty God who shall separate us from the love of God which is found in Christ Jesus. You can come right now and receive this and then live your life <laughs> without limits. Because our God is unlimited. Amen. There is no ceiling when you're in Christ Jesus. You can go as high as he want to take you. You can go as far as he want to take you. There, there are no limits when you're in Christ Jesus. Rise to your feet. Deacon just reminded me. Amen. Thank you, brother. That we got to give. Now, you can sit to give or you can stand and give. Either way you want to do it, it doesn't matter. But if you got to sit to give, go ahead. We need your giving now. We need it now. Amen. We need it. We need it. The people in our community needs it. And we need to be a means by which it can reach them. Please remember the Watkins family as we move forward. Remember to keep them in prayer for the loss of Brother Walter Watkins.
Let's pray for this um, food giveaway that we uh, do it, and we do it decently and in order. Amen. Be a blessing to people. Pray for us as those who are going to be serving uh, today. We need your prayers. Amen. People come and sometimes they act right, sometimes they don't. Amen. Amen. So I know I told you God loves you, but amen. <laughs> Let us bow. Father, we do thank you and we love you, God. We know that uh, you're the reason that we are enabled to give. And so, God, we give you praise and glory for all things come of thee, O God, and of thine own thou hast given unto us. Bless this offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We can try it again. Rise to your feet. God, we thank you for all that has transpired today. God, I pray for each and every person in the building. I pray today, God, that each of these people, members, non-members, guests, whomever, God, I pray that you open the windows of heaven. Pour each of them out a blessing that they do not have room enough to receive. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of these, your people, today, tomorrow, if you are to tarry. In Jesus' name I pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. Come on, say it one more time. Amen. amen. God bless you. Go have you a nice lunch. <laughs>